This video will take a look at the right femur, the anterior and posterior views. Here's a plastic sample of a femur going to the proximal end of the anterior view. The first structure I'm going to look at here will be the smooth item called the head. It fits into the or articulates with the acetabulum of the ascoxae or hip bone. Next will be this constricted area encircled in yellow, the anatomical neck. Then the bumps, the greater trochanter here, quite large or greater in size than another. That's the one you can feel on the side of your hip, the very large protuberance. And then this smaller one here, more toward the medial aspect, is the lesser trochanter. These trochanters will serve for muscle attachments. Then the diaphysis or shaft again on all long bones, having that tubular structure called the shaft. Now as I move the video camera down to the distal end of an anterior view and looking at its structures. The flat or smooth surface here rather is the lateral condyle. It articulates with the tibia on this distal end and the medial condyle. This if you'll notice when you work with the femur is under the head of the femur, thus it's the medial aspect, and that articulates with the tibia. Then the epicondyles, these are for muscle attachments and ligaments for the joint. There's a lateral condyle, and then over here in yellow again circle will be the medial condyle, and the clue is when you look at the head of the femur it tells you if you're medial or lateral. And then this flat surface is the patellar surface, that's where the kneecap or patella will uh, float on that surface. It's a separate bone, the patella. And again the diaphysis taking a look at that. Now turning the bone over and looking at the posterior aspect, here we have the posterior view lengthwise. And moving the camera over to the proximal end of the posterior, looking at some of the structures that will also show that did show up on the an, on the anterior. Will it be the same on the posterior? Example, here's the head of the femur, this very smooth ball shaped. But in this case we're going to see a slight indention here that I'll be pointing to. It's a fovea capitis. In there will be a ligament that helps that head of the femur stay somewhat attached to the acetabulum of the hip bone. Then again the anatomical neck, it goes 360 around the base of the head. And for the bumps again, the greater trochanter, that large protuberance one again that comes out the side of your hip you can feel on most of us. And the one that's going to show up more prominent now is the lesser trochanter in this posture view. It's a more posterior structure but we saw it a little bit on the uh, anterior. And then the gluteal tuberosity. This ridges of small bumps there will have the gluteal muscles attaching to it like the gluteus maximus in that zone. And then that gluteal tuberosity when it continues down that I pause right here at, that ridge is called the linea aspera. The proximal one-third was a gluteal tuberosity. The other two-thirds of the ridge is the linea aspera. And then moving down toward the distal posterior view. The popliteal surface, this is flat, it means back of knee, thus we're at the back of the knee. Here this smooth again, the medial condyle, much more prominent on the posterior view, again articulating with the tibia. And the lateral condyle, another articulator of the tibia. And then the intercondylar fossa, this will serve for ligament attachments like the cruciate ligaments to help give the knee strength. The lateral epicondyle, again for muscle attachment, this also was shown in the anterior view. And the medial epicondyle here, which would be under the head of the femur, down beneath the head of the femur, that part there.